Hey guys, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's edition of What I Eat in a Day YouTuber Review is sponsored by Skillshare, and we're gonna be taking a look at YouTuber Maggie McDonald. Now, before we get too far into things, I wanna chat about what I've been learning through my Skillshare membership while social distancing at home. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, they're an online learning community with a wide range of amazing creative classes for exploring new skills, developing interests, and getting lost in your own creativity. I think a lot of us are dealing with a lot of extra stress and anxiety over the future right now. And I also know a lot of people might be thinking about ways to learn some new skills and diversify in their careers. So I've been taking a course called Everyday Minimalism, Finding Calm and Creativity in Living Simply by Erin Boyle. Now these lessons have been so great for stress relief and have also encouraged me to learn some new habits that I can incorporate into my life even after this whole COVID-19 thing passes. There are also a ton of amazing drawing, writing, and journaling classes I'm definitely gonna be checking out next, all of which I think will be amazing for my anxiety before a baby comes. So whether you're bored, need some extra self-care, or want to join a creative community while in isolation, Skillshare is a great resource during these times and beyond. And for my viewers and fans, Skillshare is giving away two free months of their premium membership to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. And after that, it's just $10 a month. Okay. So let's get into this video here. Maggie is a plant-based influencer who shares her life through vlogs on YouTube with her sister, Emma, and according to her What I Eat In Day videos, is currently following her version of a food combining diet. Now, not surprisingly, she is also BFFs with someone who I've reviewed on this channel before, Kenzie Burke. Now, in case you missed my review of the food combining diet with Kenzie Burke, definitely be sure to check it out right here. I also did a blog post on the food combining diet. So if you want some more information, I'm gonna be leaving a link to that in the description below. And finally, before we jump into our review, I wanna start with my general disclaimer that the information in this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only, and you should always seek out the help of a registered dietitian or a medical professional for your unique case. So let's meet Maggie and take a look at her first meals of the day. Not that it really like matters, but it's nine o'clock. I just obviously showered, my hair is wet. Um, my sister Emma and I went to a yoga sculpts class this morning at 7.30, so it was kind of like a rushed morning just because my alarm didn't go off and I ended up like waking up at 7.05 and then I had to leave and get ready and stuff. So I had a cup of hot lemon water before class, but I didn't eat anything um, in the morning just because I knew that I was gonna come home and like have breakfast and do all that so I didn't eat anything this is the first thing that I will be eating today a banana and ginger and then I added in some cacao powder and two spices I used cardamom which is going to give you like the chai taste and then also added some cinnamon and we put spinach in this time um, I don't know how the color is going to turn out if it's going to be super pretty but we just wanted to add in a little bit more greens and then put coconut milk in for the base. We just added some shredded coconut onto the top and then also some cacao nibs, which is like, I put cacao in the smoothie. Okay, so I get that some people don't like a big breakfast before a workout and that's totally cool. And depending on when you're working out and the type of working out that you're doing, there may actually be some small benefits for some people to doing it fasted. But Maggie's justification seems to be that she was like in a rush and didn't have time to eat. Uh, not so much for any of the alleged health benefits of fasting. And honestly, I would say if you have time for hot lemon water and to film your day, you probably have time to grab like a banana or orange on the go. But again, whatever. If you're not a breakfast person, not to sweat, you do you. It actually is totally fine. Now, before we get into her smoothie, I did want to do a quick little refresher on food combining. So the food combining diet is a set of rules that insist that you eat some foods together and others separately in order to improve and enhance digestion. So for example, some common food combining rules include only eating fruit on an empty stomach, 
not combining starches with protein, not combining different types of protein, not combining starches with acidic foods, not mixing protein with fat, and eating fruits and vegetables separately. Sounds crazy restrictive, no? Now, even though Maggie's smoothie does sound like super delicious because banana and chocolate is everything in life and I love everything to do with chai, there's no protein in sight. Her smoothie is mainly made up of carbs from the banana and maybe like a little bit from the coconut milk and sprinkle of cacao nibs. I mean, if you're watching this like me, wondering why you wouldn't want to get at least a little more protein in after a workout, or even at breakfast when you're not working out, let me explain this in food combining speak. Now, basically, the theory behind food combining is that when we combine starches and protein, we're apparently putting too much strain on our digestive system. One analogy that we can use to explain this theory is peanut butter toast. Now, food combining supporters believe that when you eat fast digesting foods, like bread, and slow digesting foods, like peanut butter, you'll cause a traffic jam in your digestive tract. This peanut butter toast traffic jam will supposedly negatively affect your digestion, resulting in disease, toxic buildup, bloating, IBS, and other forms of digestive stress. To prevent that, food combiners eat the peanut butter and the toast separately. I know, how sad is that? Now, before we talk more about food combining, I wanna get back to Maggie's post-workout smoothie here. Now, even though I am a big fan of that ingredient combo, banana and chocolate, and I would totally be down to have that as a snack, as her first meal of the day and a post-workout meal at that, definitely leaves much to be desired. Now, we know how important protein is for post-workout muscle recovery, so I would really have liked to see Maggie have some protein with her carbs for that first meal. I also really hope Maggie is not relying on that small serving of cacao nibs as her source of protein, as three tablespoons of cacao nibs provide only four grams of protein. And if I had to guess, it looks like she's maybe getting less than a tablespoon in there. That is really not sufficient whatsoever, as you typically want to aim for about 20 to 30 grams of protein post-exercise, not only to help with muscle recovery, but also to keep you satiated longer to get you to that next meal. Let's take a look at day two. So I start off the morning every single day. I just have my big liter of water right here, and I made some hot lemon water, and I just take my probiotic, this is the brand that I use, it's called Seed. So I take two of these and then also my daily vitamin. I already just made what I'm having for breakfast to start the day. You guys would have seen that. And every morning I like to start off with like a bowl, a big bowl of fruit with some type of plant-based yogurt. And this is my favorite thing in the world. I look forward to it every day. And I have a few plant-based yogurts that I just wanted to tell you guys about. And this is my favorite one. It is by the brand Lava. And I love it because the ingredients are super simple. It's very clean and there's just minimal things in it. Okay, so we are kicking things off here with her supplements. I'm not really sure what kind of vitamins are in that little package there, but I'm glad that she at least is mentioning she's taking supplements, so that's a good start. As for her breakfast, well, I mean, it's a little more substantial than her banana spinach smoothie thing on day one, but still kind of plays by the bogus food combining rules of eating fruits on an empty stomach. That said, the yogurt has just two grams of protein per container, which is really not a lot. It's got some fat, which is good, but still doesn't make for a very satiating breakfast in my books. Also, of course, I'm not loving her labeling the yogurt as clean. I get what she's saying, that it's got a simple ingredient list, but I just think this talk feeds into diet culture and we don't need more of that. Folks, the only clean eating that we should all be doing is washing our fruits and vegetables. Am I right? Yeah, I'm definitely right. Okay, let's get to day three. And now we are done. I love putting everything on top because I feel like 
when you drink it it helps so you don't drink it super fast because I'm the type of person where this would be gone in like two minutes so I love to just add the little toppings you can do like goji berries um, whatever you really want I just love doing cacao nibs and coconut yeah so it's been a little bit and I'm actually gonna make like my actual breakfast now I love having a smoothie in the morning and like getting in all those nutrients and I love eating fruit but it definitely doesn't like hold me over I get super hungry after I have fruit or like a smoothie or anything it just doesn't do it for me okay so same same but different this smoothie seems to have bananas mangoes um, it's got some spinach some ginger and some cucumber and then it's blended together with coconut water so i'm not exactly shocked that maggie isn't fully satisfied after her fruit smoothie in the morning i mean this is actually quite common even with the most balanced of breakfast smoothies, in my opinion, it would obviously take us way longer to chew a banana and then chew one cup of spinach and eat a handful of cacao nibs, but blending all these ingredients together into one compact drink basically makes it so there's less work that your body needs to do to digest that smoothie. So your smoothie kind of enters your stomach pre-digested, thereby skipping a step in digestion and fast-tracking the absorption into the body. And because Maggie's smoothie lacked any sort of protein to help kind of hold her a little bit longer, she most likely got that little burst of energy from a quick spike in blood sugar and then was left feeling pretty hungry soon after. Okay, so let's move along to her second breakfast or her first snack, depending on how you wanna look at things. I swear that the lemon on top of the avocado toast is such a game changer. Like, I don't know why I haven't been doing this forever. It just makes it so good. And so I just squeeze all the juice of half of the lemon on top. This is my favorite part of every single day. The avocado toast with the matcha is just, like the best thing in the whole world. <laughs> I really love it so much and I've already started eating it and I'm just gonna drink the matcha and I have some work to do on my computer. Okay, so I am already sensing a no protein pattern from Maggie as it's already in the afternoon and there is still no protein to be had. So her avocado toast is made up of really only fat from the avocado, carbs from the bread, a little squeeze of lemon juice, and quite a lot of chili flakes. I would probably be sweating. Now, I know I may ruffle a few feathers here, especially among those in the alkaline food sphere, but lemon in its pre-digested state is acidic in pH. So if the food combining rule is to not add acidic foods to starches is based on their pre-digested state, it definitely technically breaks the rules <gasps> like it matters but then again who knows maybe maggie is banking on the rule taking into account that lemon juice produces alkaline byproducts when it's digested who knows i mean honestly it doesn't matter either way because the whole thing is bunk now studies have consistently shown that even though lemon juice produces alkaline byproducts in the urine, it actually does not have any effects on blood pH. And while we're at it, I think it's important to note that no foods have an alkalizing effect on blood pH. So from that perspective, we can't really call lemon an alkaline food. But anyways, I digress. Let's take a look at day two. Here we are, a little pre-lunch moment. <laughs> that was so aggressive, <laughs> but Mediterranean toast. I just drizzled the balsamic on top. It is so good. Stacked everything up. Oh, this is my favorite. Okay, so first of all, yum. And second of all, finally, we see an appropriate meal, whether she wants to call it a snack or breakfast or lunch, whatever. We have here a bit of protein from the hummus, some carbs from the sourdough bread, fat from the olives, and some extra veggies on top. Thank you, food combining gods, for allowing this meal. I mean, if it's even allowed, to be honest, because there is some protein with some starch, 
so who knows. Stupid rules aside, I do want to point out that Maggie says her bread of choice is sourdough when she's not having gluten-free bread. But that makes me also wonder why she's choosing gluten-free bread at all. I mean, if Maggie was eating gluten-free bread because of a gluten intolerance or celiac disease, it would make complete sense why she would want to eat gluten-free bread. But if she's able to eat sourdough no problem, that tells me that these maybe aren't really huge issues. I will say, however, that the fermentation process of sourdough bread does make it easier to digest, not only because of the prebiotic and probiotic-like properties, which are beneficial for overall gut health and digestion, but also because the process also degrades gluten a little bit, making the gluten content lower than other breads. However, it doesn't degrade gluten completely, so sourdough bread still contains wheat, barley, or rye, and should be avoided by people with actual gluten intolerance or celiac disease. Just an FYI if some of you were also a little confused about that. Based on these kinds of comments and what we've seen so far from Maggie's videos, I get a little bit of an impression that she's fallen for a lot of the diet culture rhetoric, from clean eating to superfoods, gluten-free, even the morning requisite lemon water. We are seeing a lot of unnecessary food rules and rituals playing out. Let's take a look at day three. And once it's all done, I usually just add some sort of hot sauce on top because I'm obsessed with hot sauce. So I have this sriracha that I've been loving recently and it's jalapeno and then we also have this one right here which is just the siete traditional hot sauce like i seriously am obsessed with it okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. yeah but i just oh love God. hot stuff me too girl that is a lot of hot sauce i mean i'm a big sriracha person myself but the amount of hot sauce we are seeing maggie put on her avocado toast is already giving me the sweats. Maybe it's the pregnancy, <laughs> not sure. But I also wanna comment that adding a lot of hot sauce or hot things to meals has long been a weight loss tactic, as research has shown that consuming hot sauce or, or a lot of heat and spice in large amounts has been shown to help reduce appetite. Now, considering just how low calorie Maggie's meals have been thus far, I'm really just hoping that she's not using the excessive heat to suppress her appetite. I mean, if she loves a good kick, girl, amen to that. But just something that I wanted to flag in the context of everything I've seen thus far. But let's move on to lunch. Lunch is done. This is the finished product. Just topped it off with some more red pepper flakes and pepper. Is it good? Mm -hmm. And I feel like chickpea pasta has, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of like dry. So I added a little bit more lemon and then I just put some nutritional yeast on the top. So it'll just like add a little bit of something to it. All right, hallelujah folks. We finally have some protein happening here with the chickpea pasta. So with this meal, Maggie's getting probably around 20 grams of protein, which is a totally appropriate amount of protein for a meal. So I'm really happy to see that. I am personally obsessed with chickpea pasta as it is an easy way to get your protein in without having to worry about cooking up some meat or plant-based protein if you're not totally feeling it. Especially a good call for picky toddlers who basically just want to eat carbs all day. I love that stuff. Now with this meal, Maggie's getting roughly 17 grams of protein, which I'm really happy to see because that is a perfectly appropriate amount for a meal. Um, we also are getting some healthy fats from the avocado and olive oil and lots of beautiful vegetables going on. But back to my food combining beef. One of the biggest issues with food combining is the inability to actually separate macronutrients from each other in a lot of foods. Case in point, chickpea pasta. So like I mentioned, one of the food combining rules is to not eat starches and protein together. So we know that chickpea pasta provides about 17 grams of protein, but it also has 51 grams of carbohydrate, which totally goes against this whole food combining rule and also speaks to just how unsustainable and unrealistic this diet really is. I mean, we even see Maggie add some acidity to her meal with apple cider vinegar, which 
also goes against one of the food combining rules. Bottom line, these rules are stupid and obviously are unlikely to be followed properly. So why would you even bother stressing over them? I don't know. Let's take a look at day two. All right, so things are starting to look much better around here. Maggie went for lunch with her family and chose a miso bowl with jasmine rice, edamame, chickpeas, falafel, and a variety of veggies. Plus, she had Brussels sprouts and shishitos, both of which looked insanely good. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of thinking Maggie should maybe eat out with her mom more often. But anyways, this meal obviously breaks a ton of the food combining rules. For instance, it combines different types of protein like edamame and chickpeas and falafel. It also combines starch with the jasmine rice with protein, which as we already established is apparently a big bogus no-no. Not to mention this meal also mixes protein and fat from the dressing, which goes against more food combining rules. And guess what? I am not mad about this whatsoever. This is actually what I'm hoping to see from Maggie in her videos and I'm, I'm really glad that she finally delivered something balanced that I can totally get on board with. Please Maggie, let's see more restaurant meals maybe and less smoothies. Let's take a look at day three. So I'm gonna be making like a little wrap for lunch with them. Honestly, I'm gonna make two wraps. I'm like extremely hungry because of my workout. I ended up putting half of an avocado in here. So we have little wraps, hummus, sprouts, veggies, hot sauce, all of that, and then just some cut up cucumber on the side. Okay, so this meal, while it totally looks really tasty, is pretty low carb, low protein, low calorie. You get it. I mean, Maggie opts for a low carb coconut wrap, which sounds like crackling paper or something when she tries to wrap it up, but I hope it tastes okay. Um, and again, we're seeing a ton of veggies, not a whole lot of substance. She's getting a small amount of protein from the hummus, but again, not nearly the appropriate amount that you would probably want to see for a meal. Honestly, I'm seeing a lot of green going on here and that's about it, which is perhaps the only consistent thing about Maggie's eating pattern thus far. And to be fair, she did bless us with some definite balance with her previous two lunches, but this one is a bit of a flop. So I think we're looking at two out of three when it comes to Maggie's lunches, which I guess is not so bad. Let's take a look at her afternoon snack. Meh, I didn't think we really need to see more greens after everything we've seen thus far, but I don't know if she was feeling it. I mean, I'm a dietitian. I am generally happy to see people eat more green things. So I'm not gonna complain about that. Let's take a look at day two. Okay, maybe I'm gonna complain about it. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, same, same, but different, right? More green juice. Uh, this time she made it at home, which is of course way more cost effective, but probably unnecessary given how many greens and vegetables we see in her day. Let's take a look at day three. What I'm probably gonna have like a little bit of the plantain chips with salsa and then some cauliflower tortilla chips with the cashew queso, because I'm so hungry. And another thing I wanted to show while we're having <laughs> snack time over here is the ingredients on all these snacks see these are super clean the plantain chips just plantains coconut oil and pink himalayan salt and then the queso has all of these ingredients you can pause it and read it right now but everything is clean again you can just like easily pronounce everything which is what you want and then this is the salsa super clean we're obsessed with the salsa right here and then to finish off we have the cauliflower tortilla chips and these are the ingredients for the chips so 
Again, they're all just super clean. Oh my gosh, so much clean. <laughs> You would think we are in like a Mr. Clean commercial or something with the amount of times we're hearing the word clean thrown around. But what I will say is checking ingredient lists and nutrition labels is totally actually a great way to compare different food products. But being overly concerned with what is deemed clean and what isn't can easily be taken to an unhealthy extreme. We eat for health, but we also eat for satisfaction. And I would way rather hear Maggie comment on what she likes about these snacks, how they taste, and what makes them yummy and satisfying for her versus what is and isn't on the ingredient label and that be the only deciding factor. So with this snack, we are again seeing the green juice plus some vegetable crackers and I think like some salsa or something. So a little more substantial than just the vegetable juice, but I would have liked to see a little fat in there, some protein, something to bulk this up to make it a more satiating snack. Let's take a look at dinner. I added some salt and some pink salt and pepper and I'm just gonna add some of this seasoning from Trader Joe's. Um, I've been really liking it, so I'm gonna add some of it on top. I don't know why it's so hard for it to come out of the container, but I'm gonna add it, mix it up, and let it sit for a little bit longer. And dinner is almost done. I think we're gonna put nutritional yeast on the top, but all the veggies are cooked, and then we just put some pesto on top. And that, my friends, is the reason that we do not need to buy or make green juice every day. Maggie is literally eating a bowl of steamed vegetables for dinner. Just vegetables. Okay. I mean, yes, there is some hemp hearts based pesto and some nutritional yeast on top, both of which will contribute some protein. But like still, this is a very low calorie, relatively low protein, low carb and low fat meal. She does mention that her and her sister usually make this meal with some coconut rice, but they weren't in the mood tonight, which is totally okay. I mean, listen to your body, listen to what you're craving. But why not just substitute that for another carb instead of just eliminating it entirely? Quinoa, soba noodles, couscous, bread, potatoes. I can think of a lot of ways to beef this up. Ditto with the protein. I mean, you could easily throw in some chickpeas or some tofu. Now, you guys know I am all about eating intuitively and following your hunger signals, but taken in the context of her whole day, it's just not enough food. Please, Lord, let there be some tofu or quinoa or chickpeas on day two. Let's take a look. Okay, so dinner is done. I added some red chili flakes on the top, and what I like to do whenever I have pasta is I like to fill it with vegetables. So you guys obviously saw all the veggies I just cooked. It adds more volume to the pasta. So having that and then a big salad right here, which just has some olives. I added red onion and dill, and then the lemon tahini dressing. Okay, so we are back with another pasta recipe. But unfortunately, I don't think this one is chickpea pasta. It doesn't look like it anyways. So no major source of protein. It seems like Maggie picks and chooses when she abides by the food combining rules, depending on what she's eating or where she is. And that's totally fine. I mean, I'd rather she didn't abide by them at all. So as we saw from her lunch, she totally stepped outside of the restrictions of food combining and had an actual complete balanced meal that broke nearly every rule in the food combining book, which is a big yay in my books. Um, but now, of course, we're back with dinner and we're getting right back on track with the food combining train with the protein restriction. Now, to her credit, I imagine that it must be really challenging for people following this diet to meet their protein needs, since a lot of the rules here in this food combining world limit or restrict protein in some way. And that means the only option is to get your protein basically by itself, eating it all on its own, which is not very exciting. But if she actually insists on following the rules, as bogus as they are, she could include more protein-rich snacks in between her meals rather than relying on smoothies, juices, and avocado toasts. Just saying. I'm also kind of feeling a little 
weird about her saying that she likes to fill her pasta with lots of veggies specifically to add more volume to her meals. Now, I am all about adding more vegetables to my meals, but the innate purpose should be to add more nutritional value, texture, and flavor to your meals, not just to add more volume. Now, the volume thing may actually be a tool for a lot of people based on their health status and their goals, and I totally support that. But for an active young woman like Maggie, who is basically already subsisting on vegetables, this seems like total overkill. Let's take a look at day three. I was supposed to go to a 7.30 soul cycle with Gretchen today, but her and I are just feeling like so tired and we knew that we wanted to like let our bodies rest. Okay, so if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I talk a lot about intuitive eating, but it's just as important to move your body in an intuitive way as well. It can be so easy to kind of get caught up in our workout routines and feel obligated to follow through with them, even when our body is saying no. So I can totally get on board with what Maggie is saying here about listening to your body when it needs its rest and just tending to its needs. Let's take a look at her meal and I'm excited to see it because she's excited to see it. So let's see. Dinner is ready. It took literally like 30 minutes to make and this is the finished product. So we have um, spinach, chickpeas right here, black olives, tomato, mushrooms, peppers, and then underneath there is all um, white rice. And then Emma just added some liquid aminos, some coconut liquid aminos to hers. Obviously, you guys already know. I have my favorite hot sauce that I'm gonna put on mine too. So this is dinner, super easy, quick, and yummy. Amazing, so finally we've got some more balance here, what I have just been craving. So we have, of course, still lots of vegetables, which is a great thing, but this time we've got some chickpeas and some jasmine rice on the bottom. Now I can't actually see the rice, but I'm assuming it's there. And in that case, I give this meal a gold star for breaking the stupid food combining rules. So well done, Maggie. I'm so proud. Okay, now let's close off on dessert because I am still hungry. This baby needs to be fed. Let's take a look at day one. It's very unexpected with us, but I got a size two chocolate with cacao drizzle, pink salt, coconut, and chocolate chips. So it looks amazing. And this stuff is so good. Yes, Maggie, I love this as dessert. And what I love even more is how Maggie's talking about her ice cream selection. She didn't choose it because it was clean or healthy. At least she didn't say that but she chose it because she genuinely enjoys the flavor combination of chocolate and coconut. And I mean, who doesn't, especially with that pink Himalayan salt on top? Yes, love that. Let's take a look at day two. I have my tea at night. This is an OG on my channel, this Who chocolate. I really like the mint one. I just had a few squares of this. Tyler actually got me this for Valentine's Day because he knows I love it so much, um, but this really helps me if I have a sweet tooth and I need something after I eat. And also, obviously, ingredients, super clean, and I really like this. They have a bunch of different flavors, too. Um, they have, like, mint, they have sea salt, they have a really good hazelnut one. So there's a bunch of different ones to try. I just made my pre-bedtime tea. This is the Toolsy Cleanse. I really like this one. And I just have this before I go to bed. It helps me wind down and it's just very cleansing for your body. So I like to have this at the end of the day. It's oh, Maggie, why you gotta ruin my mood like that? I was riding so high on that first ice cream dessert, but I knew sooner or later, I would probably hear my favorite word, cleanse. Now, before we get into another cleanse rant, I do wanna point out that Maggie has not had one, but two teas in the evening. This is likely perfectly normal behavior for most people. In fact, I think tea is a great way to get in your fluid needs without added sugar, and it's a really great soothing pairing for that chocolate, which looks delicious, by the way. 
But given what I've seen from Maggie's channel so far, and the fact that she's specifically chosen a cleansing tea, I hope that she isn't using the tea to add volume to her stomach the same way she talks about using vegetables at dinner. I did actually take a peek at the ingredient list for this tea and the main ingredient I saw was ginger. Now I've seen a lot of influencers turn to ginger tea to help with bloating and indigestion and research actually has shown that ginger tea may be effective at helping with bloating from indigestion and also may help to reduce nausea. There's nothing magical about ginger tea or any other tea for that matter that cleanses or detoxifies besides just being a natural diuretic and making you pee more. And something that I must say that I've said before and I will say again for as long as I have to, the only scientifically proven way to actually cleanse or detoxify your body is to simply rely on your trusty organs. Your kidneys, liver, lungs, skin, and digestive tract do all the work for you. I say just save all that money and spend it on tea that you actually enjoy, or like more chocolate, whatever works for you. Let's take a look at day three. And after dinner, I love to have any type of ginger tea. My favorite is the Tulsi lemon and ginger and it just really soothes my stomach and satisfies me. And it's just such a nice, like warm treat to have after I eat. We have just like a bunch of chocolate. So I'm gonna have some chocolate. Um, and this one's my fave brand. I love the salty dark chocolate one and then also the mint one. I forgot to vlog, but I made some of the magnesium calm like drink, um, the lemon flavor that I was talking about earlier. So. I, but I will update you guys in the morning how this worked just because I want to be able to tell you guys So I'm gonna head to bed, but I'm not gonna end off the video because I have a few things that I'm gonna go over in the morning Just like how this worked and other things that I want to talk about Okay, so again, we saw the same tea and the same kind of chocolate um, And as for the magnesium supplement, it is true that there is research to support the use of magnesium for regulating sleep since it helps calm the body by targeting the parasympathetic nervous system while also regulating the sleep hormone melatonin. It also binds to the neurotransmitter GABA, which is responsible for calming nerve activity. So I'm glad that Maggie is using it for this purpose, but I just want to kind of give everyone a heads up that the combination of her magnesium calm supplement and her cleansing tea sounds like it might result in a long night on the loo. You've been warned, magnesium can definitely cause diarrhea when consumed in excess. Now, before we get into the final analysis, I want to share this comment from Maggie about her diet and about food combining in general. Honestly, like the only thing that I really focus on is having fruit in the morning. Like I don't really eat it in the afternoon or anything or at nighttime. So that's basically it. But the way that I eat, you don't really have to like put any thought with like combining your foods because I don't eat um, any animal protein. So. Okay, so finally the answer we've all been looking for. We've got a full disclosure of what food combining really means to Maggie. Now in this video, which was posted back in November of last year, Maggie comments on her plant-based food combining diet and mentions that she pretty much only really follows the fruit in the morning rule. Now, I love fruit in the morning just as much as the next person, but I still have some serious questions here. Now, technically with food combining, this rule suggests that you would have to have fruit by itself on an empty stomach. However, we do see Maggie still combine her fruit with other foods like yogurt and veggies in her smoothie, which makes me wonder if she's breaking the stupid food combining rules anyway. I mean, why not go all the way and add more value to your breakfast or to any of her meals for that reason? Now we know that having fruit in the morning does not hold her over for very long anyway. She said that herself. So this would actually be a pretty easy and intuitive fix. Something as simple as just adding some nut butter or protein powder to a smoothie or having a handful of mixed nuts or even swapping out her coconut yogurt for a soy brand, which would have some more protein. 
I know I've said the word protein what feels like a thousand times already in this video, um, but even though eating plant-based or vegan in Maggie's case may limit your protein options, there are still plenty of plant-based protein options available that Maggie simply is not really utilizing enough of in her meals. I would just love to see Maggie like readjust her focus on what's clean or what superfoods she's adding to her meals and focus more on how to make her meals more balanced, more satiating, and ultimately more nutrient dense. And that may help prevent any possible nutrition deficiencies into the future. So in general, is this way of eating balanced? I'm gonna say not so much. I mean, she's having lots of veggies, fruit, some carbohydrates, and some fats. I'm not seeing enough consistent protein in her days, depending on the day. And this is part of my issue with food combining because it just makes it so difficult to consistently consume enough protein throughout your meals and snacks because of so many different rules and restrictions around not combining protein with any other food. Now, assuming an approximate weight of, let's say, 120 pounds, Maggie probably should be aiming for between 55 and 94 grams of protein, depending on her fitness activity and goals. And after doing a quick nutrient analysis of her meals, it appears that her daily protein is all over the map. She only hits the minimum protein requirement for day one, and the other two days, she unfortunately falls below her protein needs, which to me is highly concerning for somebody who is active and working out. Now, I'm all for eating in a way that makes you feel good and is sustainable in the long run. And Maggie seems to be really happy with this way of eating. She talks about it in this video. She says that she's feeling good and she loves, loves, loves her diet. But I have to flag that for most people, a diet like this would not be sustainable and would not feel good. So I'm not surprised that she feels the need to bulk up a lot of her meals with extra vegetables in order to feel satisfied. Now, are there any problematic claims or assumptions made by this channel? I think I heard Maggie say pretty much every trendy word in the diet culture handbook, just saying. I mean, whether we're talking about clean eating, cleansing teas, superfoods, lemon water, the obsession with maintaining a clean or pure way of eating without any sort of wiggle room really perpetuates a lot of orthorexic ideals and rules that we've seen enough of here on YouTube. I don't think that Maggie is necessarily purposefully trying to dupe her followers into kind of going along with this food combining lifestyle that she herself is not qualified to promote. I kind of just think that she is misinformed herself, which is so common in this very confusing wellness space. But I think when you put yourself out there as a wellness influencer, even if you're not necessarily selling anything per se, you need to take responsibility for the information that you're sharing, even if it's painted as just what you do and what works for you. People are bound to follow. Now, is there anything that we actually really like from her channel? So as far as the positive things that we've seen from Maggie's channel, despite the overall lack of balance I see in her diet, I do like the variety that she has in her meals while still making sure that she's including foods that she really loves, like avocado toast, for example. We do see her share several different types of meals, including pastas, wraps, chickpea bowls, miso bowls, toasts, smoothies, yogurt bowls, all of which can be excellent meal options when executed in a balanced way. So I'm at least happy to have that inspiration. I also appreciate her honesty with her followers when it comes to disclosing her thoughts on food combining, as well as listening to her body when it comes to kind of taking a rain check on a workout when she wasn't feeling up for it. Bottom line, I can definitely get on board with the idea of being flexible and adjusting a diet to make it work for you, the way that Maggie talks about doing basically with food combining. But what is ultimately the most important thing to consider is how sustainable the diet really is. And on that note, whether or not there are actually even any likely benefits, which in the case of food combining, I think we've demonstrated previously that there are not. Diets should not make you feel hungry immediately after eating a meal like breakfast or make you restrict important nutrients like protein 
or make you feel as though you can only eat certain foods that are deemed clean while avoiding other foods that don't fall into that arbitrary category. These may be problematic behaviors that have been touted by diet culture as being normal, healthy, and forms of self-care. I believe that there is nothing healthy and caring about feeling hungry or deprived or restricted of important nutrition. So I do hope that Maggie continues to move away from the restrictive food combining rules as bogus as they are and find ways of eating that truly serve her and her health. Well, on that note, folks, that is all for today's video. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with who you would like to see me review next. And until then, subscribe to the channel. I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye. Thank you.